Mermaid Mural Acrylic and Gel Nail Art Tutorial Part 1. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I did my 2017 Nails Magazine's Mural Contest entry. And so I got second place, which was just announced, announced in the March issue, which is so exciting. And I wish I could actually like hold the mural and show it to you, but you have to mail it in, you don't get it back, so I don't actually have it in my possession anymore. Anyways. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I did the background, which is all done with gel polish and acrylic paint. And the background is as crazy as this may sound, my favorite aspect of this design because it is so soft and surreal looking and just so, like it's just pretty and simple and I love that. So I hope you like that too and definitely check back over the next couple days to see how I did all the 3D stuff. Once again, that's gonna be in two more videos and I hope you like that and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So to begin with, I just went and I have all of my nail tips secured to these two stir sticks that are just these wooden stir sticks. And I'm going to start working on the first layer of the background. So I have a dark blue gel polish and I'm just going to paint it at a diagonal going across. And then I'm going to dab in some of the dark green gel polish. This is all gel polish. I'm just going to dab in some dark green and then add some black near the very bottom of that. And then at the top corner, I'm going to start with a really pretty shimmery sky light silvery blue and add basically the exact opposite area. So all of it that's not painted yet, I'm going to be filling in with that lighter color so the idea here is to have it dark in one corner and then get progressively or to have it light in one corner and then get darker as it goes down into the other side so that's what I'm going for here so then I'm just gonna fill in the rest of that area and I'm gonna blend them together just a little bit with the gel brush itself and then using a separate gel brush I'm gonna blend in the colors a little more add a second coat to everything there so I'm gonna start with a second coat of the darker color of blue add some more of that green in there add some more black and then in the lighter color, I'm also gonna add some more, it's like a purplier blue, it's more like a periwinkle color, and then more of that light shimmery color of blue, adding that over the top. What I did is I just grabbed all of my blue and green gel polishes and I just laid them out to see what I thought, and then I'm gonna blend them in together. So I kinda didn't have an exact plan for the background colors, I just saw what I had and worked it out. And then blending those colors to get at the bottom. I started at the top and then did the bottom because if you get some of the lighter color and the darker color, it's not going to show as much as getting some of the darker color and the lighter color. So then in the top corner where it's the light side, I'm going to be adding some aqua color and just brush that on kind of roughly and then from that fan it out. So just paint it like rays coming down and then I'm going to be blending all of that out with my gel brush and so I'm just going to progressively just brush it out so it isn't such straight lines. It's more of a soft as a softness to it and also blend out that area up at the top and then I'm going to be adding another layer of that aqua color same exact placement that I did before so just some dabs up at that corner and then brushing that out into the rays from the sun and then with a smaller brush I'm going to be blending these out but keeping it a little bit more focused this time so it's not quite as broad so I'm just going to start blending it out there like that making sure that it's a continuous line and then go through and blend the sides out so I'm trying to maintain a little bit more of that color potency in the center and blend it out more on the sides of each of those little segments there and after you have that done, you can go ahead and cure this again. So there's lots of curing in this beginning part, but it's the end result I just absolutely love. So then I'm going to also blend out some of that top area. And now I'm going to be adding white. So just with white gel polish, again, straight from the bottle, I'm going to go through and just add a smaller line in the, sec in the center of each of those other areas there. So on the top and that where the water is hitting or where the light's hitting the surface of the water and then going down in the center of each of those rays. And then with that small brush again, blending them out, working it out so it doesn't, it looks like it's a little bit more natural instead of just from the bottle, plus working it into the crevices between each of the nails because it's hard to get right in there just from the polish straight up. So you gotta work it in with a brush. And then I'm going to be blending those out again some more just with that larger brush again, just progressively working it out. And then I also blended out the top of the water, those rays. And then I'm going to be with a smaller brush and white gel, just going through and adding a really intense line down the center of each ray. And then a little bit at the top of that, just to really define that. And then also with a darker shade of blue, I'm just gonna add a couple shadows on that water surface there. Just a little bit, not too much and blend that out and then apply a layer of matte top coat over the entire design. The matte top coat is going to make this so easy to paint on that and smooth it out really significantly because it's not super smooth after all those layers of gel. So applying a nice, even, you know, a good layer of matte top coat and this is gel top coat 
over the entire thing will really help out the rest of the painting in this one. After you have all that on there, go ahead and cure it, and then take that out and remove the tacky layer. This is just with some isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free wipe, and really make sure that you get into the crevices to remove all of the tacky layer from the entire thing. So now I'm going to start with white paint and paint the base shape of my little sea turtle who's up basking in the rays of the sun coming through the water. After I have that white on there, I'm going to go through with some dark greens, some browns, lighter greens, and just paint all those details. I'll start by outlining each of those important areas, shell, fins, or flippers, fins, flippers, I don't know. Um, and then just going through and then blending that out, adding some brown, some white, making sure that he's nice and colorful and easy to see and to find and all of that good stuff. And uh, green sea turtles, which is what this guy is, are actually pretty brown when you look at them. So you do want some of that green in there, but definitely make sure that he's not just green. You definitely you want some tan colors in there and browns and other colors because he's he's actually pretty brown. Working on his head there some. I mean, there is green, but you just got to keep a nice balance of it. Adding all his facial features. Add his eye with black. Add some spots on his head. And then I'm going to be filling in his shell first with a really bright green, blending in some brown and then highlighting it with some white, just like that. And then I'm gonna go through and add the spots again, just like you did on his head, but this time with brown on the shell, just like that. Highlight with a little bit more white and that guy is good to go. So now I'm going to be adding some, um, just a couple fish here and there. The first one is going to be an angel fish that's really bright yellow. So I'm gonna start with just the white shape of him, just like I did before. Adding that layer of white in the beginning is really going to help even if, I mean, this fish is uh, quite a bit white, so I mean, that works out for that. But like with the turtle, adding a layer of white creates a blank slate so that there's no chance of the background color showing through, even if it's accidentally. And so that really does help out make the end result look a little bit more crisp. And then I'm gonna be adding all of his details on there, some yellow, some black, some stripes. And then I'm gonna be adding another little fishy off to the side. This one's much smaller, a little less detailed. Starting again with that white, filling him in with some yellow. And then I'm going to take some red, add some details on him like that. And so now I'm going to be adding some jellyfishes. So I'm going to be adding just like their bell and then their tentacles. And they're actually, jellyfish are actually sea jellies. I mistakenly call them jellyfish. I apologize. And then I'm going to be doing three of them. So I did three bells and three tentacles per uh, sea jelly. And I'm going to make the first one more orange. So I'm going to start just add orange on him. And then I'm just going to add orange over the closest section of the bell and then over the tentacles and then I'm going to add some red to the underside of the bell just like around um, highlighting that and then fill in the background with blue add a couple more thinner tentacles around that do the next one with red and because sea jellies are relatively see-through that's why you added the blue sort of in the background there just so that it looks like he's not so opaque it makes him look a little more airy then I'm going to do this next one with mostly red make him a little darker but I am going to still blend in some yellow for highlights and add some black here and there to really define the shadows. And then the last one I'm going to do with mostly yellow. So I don't want them all to be the same color, but I wanted them all to be close. So for that one, I'm going to be doing some of the details with orange and then add some highlights with white and a little bit in the blue in the background for that one as well. Just like that. So now for the dark sides, so that was all on the light side. And now on the dark side, I'm going to be doing some, I'm going to do an angler fish. So I'm going to start with his shape with brown. And then I'm going to be blending in some white. And for the dark side, you want to make sure that you use very neutral colors like browns, blacks, white, gray, everything like that. You don't want to use any bright colors like a really bright blue or uh, pink or yellow, anything like that. You want to all keep that stuff on the on the light side. So now I'm going to be adding his details with white, so some of his fins and his tail and then his little light bulb area there. And there he's all done that. And so now I'm going to be adding an anchor, starting with brown, just paint the base shape of the anchor itself. And then I'm also going to be adding the little piece of rope that's going up towards and off to the side. Just continue that up there like that. And then doing some highlights with some white making sure that it does look like, and make sure that you have the lighter side so you're highlighting things so that it looks like they're getting the sunshine from where the sun is. So as you can see, it's all, all the lighter sections are focused up towards where I have that light air, the light source. Add a little bit of details with black on that as well. And then I'm going to be adding a couple, I'm gonna add a skeleton of a fish. So that's what I'm starting with here. So there's his head, and then the spine, tail, 
And this is all just with white here, and it's diluted white, so it has kind of a transparency to it. And then add all the rest of his fish bones, just like that. Teeth, you wanna give him some teeth, because he's on the dark side, he's not very nice. And then I'm also going to be, after I have him done, I'm going to be adding a human skull. And I did age him just a little bit with some diluted brown, just so it wasn't quite so bright white. So then there's the start of the skull, and then I'm going to be adding some brown in there. I don't want it to look so clean. Adding some brown is gonna make him look a little bit more aged. And blend that in. And then I'm gonna be adding black in the eye sockets, in the nasal cavity, around in that, in the jaw. And just keep adding the details with white, brown, and black, just like that. And then I'm going to be applying another layer of matte top coat over the entire design. And so this background is done now, and everything else is going to be completed with 3D, so with acrylic. And I will show that in the following two tutorials. So if you want to see how I did the rest of this, please keep watching. I'll upload them in the next two days. And when they are uploaded, there will be links for them in the description box below. So I hope you like this little first part. Like I said, the background is definitely my favorite. I love the way that that sun comes through the water. I think that's just, it's my favorite part. So I hope you like it, and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well.